When you wanna do some advanced scripting in Spotfire with Python, R, or other languages, you'll do that with what's called a data function. Now, data functions are part of the transformations concept. They're not a data canvas transformation per se, but they still work as a transformation. They work like transformations to perform actions on your data and do those advanced calculations. The results of the data function are also all logged in your data canvas and you can work with them in your data canvas. So what exactly is a data function? At the highest level, a data function has input and output data, and it works on that data, and it's parameterized through input and output parameters. So this can be through data tables, columns, document properties, and you can subset in the data function with markings and filters, and then you can output with data tables, columns, and other properties. Now, these are all very dynamic, and as you work with your analysis, you can you can drag and you can select different data and it will all work interactively and dynamically. Now, data functions work with R, Python, but also MATLAB, SAS, NIME, cloud services such as AWS and Azure and GCP, Google Cloud Platform. And we also have TEAR, which is TIPCO's Enterprise Runtime for R and TIPCO Data Science, which will work with the data functions. So let's look at some examples. Here I have some Airbnb data and I'm using a Python data function to do sentiment analysis on the reviews. Now, Python data functions became native in Spotfire in version 10.7, but there's an extension available for those of you that are not on 10.7 yet and are on previous versions. So the data function can be parameterized through document properties. I have here keywords and the lemmatized value. Now those go into my data function. If I go to data function properties and I go to my sentiment analysis, I can go to my parameters and I've created parameters for input text, number of topics, and lemmatize. And those are tied with these document properties and property controls. The output is just gonna be columns for sentiment, topic ID, and keywords. So here, when I go to Spotfire and I just, let's say my keywords to 10, you can see this calculating and this is gonna recalculate the sentiment for 10 keywords. So here we see 10 keywords have been identified and this has been extracted using my Python data function for sentiment analysis. When I go into my data canvas, I can click this far right node from my data table and I can see that these columns were added here. Now, when I click these columns, I can see information, I can see the Python script was used um, and I can remove these if I want and also add more transformations if I'd like. Now, let's take a look at the sentiment overview. So this is for the Seattle area and if I click Queen Anne, I actually have an R data function that's gonna calculate a heat map here for my selected values. So again, this is very dynamic as I select different values. So when I go into data and data function properties, you can see this tear script. Now that's our R environment. Now here you can see the script with edit script. And when I go to edit parameters, you'll see the parameters that were calculated or that were used for this calculation. And the output here are data tables. So I can hit OK here and let's take a look in my data canvas. This has generated this heat map data table. And this shows me that I have a data function as a source and the heat map data table is created an entirely new table based on my data. And here I'm using Python and R together on my data all in one interactive workflow. Now here I have heart disease data for different patients across Canada, and I can select different predictors here. These are again document properties that are gonna be fed as parameters into my data function, but the execution engine now is gonna be TIPCO data science. So when I select different pr predictors here, we can see this revised variable importance calculating now this is using the Statistica component of TIPCO Data Science, also known as TIPCO Data Science Workbench. And I can also use the Team Studio component of TIPCO Data Science. Here's the TIPCO Data Science workflow. This is all being re-executed on the TIPCO Data Science engine every time I make a change in Spotfire. So as I select different values, that is all recomputed and that whole workflow can be hidden from the user. They never even have to see it on their end. Coming back to my Airbnb analysis, I'm gonna show you how to create a simple data function from scratch and show you the mechanics. So on this page, I have some columns from my Airbnb reviews and I have the listing price. I'm gonna create a data function by going to tools, register data functions, 
Here I can select which engine I want to use. I have a Python script and I have an R script using the tear engine. That's which one I'm going to use for this example. And I'm going to name this simple DF or simple data function. And if I want to use open source R packages from CRAN, I can type them in here and separate them by semicolons. That will make those packages available to my script and the whole data function. In Python, you don't need to put anything in the input field. You can just import the packages right into your script. So for this, I'm just going to double my price and I'm going to say result and I'm going to say price times two. Now for my input parameters, I need to bring in that price. So I'll add an input parameter. I'll name it price, which is the name of the variable in my script. And I'm going to choose the type being a column since it's a column of values in this data table. I'm going to restrict this to a numeric type and I'm going to make this a required parameter. So for required parameters, that is, is required for your data function to execute, but you can also use optional parameters by unchecking this box, which allows you to use document properties and other values um, that are not required. And that allows you to still have the data function execute, even though the values may not be available. So I'll just hit OK here. And I could do the same thing to create the output parameter, but a shortcut is you can just highlight your variable in the data function editor and right click and then you can go to input or output parameter. So for output parameter named result, I'm going to make this a column. Okay, so now I've created the structure of my data function. I need to wire that up to my data. So I'll hit run and here I'll select column for the price and I'll select Airbnb reviews and I need to go to the price column. Now, if I wanted this to be based on just markings or filters, I can choose filtering schemes or I can check this for the marking value. Now for my output, I'm going to use result and I'm going to write this as a column to my Airbnb reviews table and I'll hit OK and I hit close and you can see in the background that this executed right away on the fly. So my result is now twice of the price and my data function has now been set in Spotfire. If I ever want to edit this, I can just go to data and data function properties, and I can edit the script and edit the parameters. The last thing to talk about is if you want these to be refreshed, uh, the different marking changes and selections on charts and filters, you need to check that refresh automatically checkbox.